This is one of those wands that you get from the Great Wolf Lodge. And this is a lamp. I have a very legit project to share with you. If you've ever been to the Great Wolf Lodge, you know how cool it is for your kids to have their own personalized magic wands. But what if I told you that outside the lodge you can repurpose those wands into something even more legit? Imagine your kids being able to control things around the house just by waving their little baby magic wands. They'll be like tiny little Harry Potters, just like in the movies. I'm going to show you how to turn those wands into home automation controllers. So nab a Magi Quest wand from one of your kids and let's get started. Okay, so each of the magic wands has this little infrared bulb on the front of it. It's kind of like a TV remote. You can think of it like a TV remote that only has one button. Oh, and super side note from future Seth, if you don't have Great Wolf Lodge nearby, you can pick these up pretty cheap on eBay. You need two pieces of software to do this. Both of these pieces of software are generally going to be running on a server of some kind on your network. That server might be an old PC sitting in your spare room, or it might be on something like a Raspberry Pi or another similar single board computer. The first piece of software that we need is called Home Assistant, which is a must have if you do any smart home stuff. The second piece is called ESP Home, which makes using various ESP and Arduino microcontroller boards super easy. It gives you a simple web interface and a simple configuration file format that reduces the complexity and learning curve to nearly zero. There are already a ton of guides out there showing you how to get started in hosting services on your network. Just Google for something like get started with Home Assistant and everything you learn will apply to ESP Home as well. You can even install ESP Home inside of Home Assistant as a Home Assistant add-on. I'll leave a link in the video description to Home Assistant's installation guide. If I'm wrong and there are fewer solid guides than I'm suggesting, let me know in the comments. We need a way to read the infrared signal from the wand and turn that into an API call to our home assistant server. That's where the ESP device comes in. ESP devices are these cheap little microcontroller boards that are easy to power. They have built-in GPIO pins for connecting things like infrared sensors and they have built-in Wi-Fi. By the way, if you want to skip this whole hardware part, I sell DIY kits where I supply all the pieces and you just put them together. I also sell kits where I've already done the soldering and put everything together and all you need to do is flash your microcontroller with the configuration that I'll be giving you later. You should theoretically be able to use any microcontroller supported by ESP Home, but I have not tested all of them. I will list out the devices that I have tested in the video description, along with some Amazon links in case you want to try them. For the rest of the video though, I'm going to assume that you're using my suggested setup, which is an ESP8266. It's a Wemos D1 Mini clone that I found on Amazon. Any other ESP device that you find shouldn't be too different. The only thing that's likely to change is which GPIO pins you connect the infrared sensor to. That's going to be different for every device, but I'm going to link to a website in the video description that gives you pinouts for every device that you can find. Next, we need an infrared sensor. There are a few different types. The only type that I have tested so far is the 38 kilohertz TSOP4838. These are cheap on Amazon, also linked below. We also need a way to power the microcontroller. I found some really small and cheap UL rated ones on Amazon. I highly suggest these and I'll link them below. It's really important that you buy UL rated power supplies for safety's sake. All of your electronics should be UL rated and most of them probably are, but buying a cheap little power supply on the internet for a project like this is exactly where you'd accidentally buy something that's not UL rated. It's especially important when we're talking about leaving them plugged in all the time in proximity to your sleeping children. I also found these really nice and pliable 10 foot micro USB cables linked below. The only downside of these specific cables is that they're a little on the heavy side. In a lot of cases, this is a nice thing. They're really heavy duty and they feel super high quality. But if you're setting this tiny little microcontroller on a desk in front of a lamp or something like that, then the cable is actually heavy enough to pull the microcontroller off the desk which is not great in every circumstance. I'm gonna try to find a lighter USB cable that will fit the bill and include it in the video description, but I haven't found that yet. If you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. I will say though that some well-placed Velcro is likely to solve this issue for a lot of cases. 
The last component we need is a nice case to put our microcontroller in. I've designed a case that I 3D print and I sell in my shop. I'm planning to make a few variations. If you have any ideas or special requests for the design, please leave me a comment. I'm also including a link to the STL and OpenSCAD files for the case. So you can print these out at home if you have a 3D printer. In order for the microcontroller to receive signals from the infrared sensor, the infrared sensor has to be soldered onto the microcontroller. This is pretty easy, and I'm not going to go through the entire process of soldering in this video, but I am going to roughly describe what needs to happen, and I'm going to link to a full soldering guide in the video description. We need to connect the infrared sensor pins to the 5 volt, the ground, and the D4 pins on the microcontroller. D4 in my case corresponds to GPIO2, but depending on your device, that is likely to be different for you. We want it to end up in this orientation. The infrared sensor specs ask for 3.3 volts, but I have found that the 5 volt pin works just fine. Insert the pins like that. We're just going to stop right where the pins get fatter. After a pretty quick and painless soldering job, we should be off to the races. By the way, if you have already seen the soldering guide, you know that that was a bit of a jab at myself. Fighting with the camera and the lights proved to be pretty difficult, and I screwed this one up pretty bad, which you'll see here in just a second. It's a pretty nasty example of a soldering job, but you know what? It's going to do the job just fine. If you decide to give soldering a shot and you end up with some solder joints that look like this, don't worry about it. They'll work just fine. The only thing you need to look for is a cold solder joint, which I discuss in that video. Just another quick reminder though, if you don't have the equipment or the skills to do this soldering, I sell completely soldered versions of this setup in my shop, as well as fully assembled kits. If you're planning on taking on this task yourself though, and you just need some guidance, please make sure to check out my full soldering guide. Both of those are available in the video description. Okay, now we're going to flash the microcontroller. So this is the ESP8266. So this USB cable is just plugged into my laptop. If you have used ESP Home before, um, you can probably just copy my config. You can probably make sense of most of it. If you're not familiar with ESP Home, hang in here with me. I'll show you what's up. This is what the interface will look like out of the box. This is the piece of the whole situation that makes programming this little guy super easy. All it's really going to take is this config file, which you can find in the GitHub repository linked in the video description. We're going to click new device. These two buttons do the same thing. We're going to click continue. We don't care about ESP home web yet. And we're going to name this based on, I tend to lean toward uh, where the sensor is going to go or what the sensor is going to control. So for example, if this sensor is going to control a lamp in my child's room, I might call it one sensor child, a lamp. This is the name that is going to end up referring to your configuration here in ESP Home. I'm going to enter the name of a Wi-Fi SSID in my home. Capitalization is important. I'm also going to do the same thing with a password. And uh, that saved it into my ESP Home secrets, which I will show you in just a moment. We're going to choose ESP8266 because that is the type of microcontroller that this is. And then we're going to copy this encryption key and save it in a blank text file. We're going to need it here in a second. We're not going to click install right now because we need to prep the config further. We're going to click skip. That encryption key that I just copied is also available right here, but I'm about to overwrite that whole file. So that's why I nabbed it. So I'm just going to jump into edit. I'm going to highlight all this and I'm just going to paste my config like so. There's a couple things that we need to edit. This is going to be the name that shows up in Home Assistant. Well, one of these, I'm not sure whether it's the name or the friendly name. I'm going to do similar to the name of the config and we're going to call it child a lamp. This retrigger timeout is an important value and I think I have it set pretty well, but you may want to twiddle it. It refers to how long it waits after triggering once to trigger again. You can think of it like a debounce. I think it also automatically sends an off after this timeout as well. It's kind of like wave the wand, on is triggered, this timeout occurs, off is triggered, and then it's listening again. Something like that. At least that's the way it appears. 
if you're using a different board, you would end up editing this. If you're using a non ESP 8266, this domain setting here, probably not important, but you may want to change that uh, based on your home networking configuration. Now I wanna to describe to you how secrets work in ESP home. As you can probably work out here, it text replaces as long as I have inserted a value with exclamation mark secret and then a name. I'm gonna jump out real quick, jump over here into secrets. So anything that we have into this file is available to be accessed that way from our configs. So I'm actually gonna put the home assistant API key in here, um, which is the encryption key that we nabbed earlier. I'm gonna grab this encryption key, copy that, and I'm gonna use that as my home assistant API key. Um, you get to set it on both sides and they just have to match. So you can set it to whatever you want. Um, I'm using this encryption key that is generated for me. So I'm going to say home assistant API key. There we go. Save that. Now we can access those secrets inside of our configurations, just like so. Wands have individual IDs, so you can differentiate between them and you can trigger potentially different actions based on what ID comes through. But we don't know what those IDs are yet. So we're going to actually have to collect those first, which means we need to take this whole configuration here out of the equation temporarily. We're going to comment that out. We're also going to comment this out right here and we're going to replace it with dump all. So what that's going to do is let us read the logging from every infrared signal that the receiver receives. We're going to save this and we're going to flash our device with this configuration. So we're going to come out here. We're going to click install. We're going to click manual download. What we're going to do here is prepare a package, which is going to end up being saved in our downloads folder. And we are going to use a different utility to upload this package to the microcontroller. This is going to take a while. The very first time that you run this, it's going to take a long time. On subsequent builds though, it's a lot faster. Okay. That's finished up. Hop over to my downloads and there it is right there. So what we're going to do now is close out of this click new device again. Now we're interested in this link here, open ESP home web. We have our USB cable connected. I'm going to click connect. I don't actually know the difference between the two of these. I tend to click the one that starts with WCH and it always works. So try that one at your own risk. I don't know how different it's going to look for you. Okay, so ESP Home Web gives us this big blue button with an arrow pointed at it, and you're gonna wanna click on this. That's not the right button, don't do it. This is for the specific case that you are programming a lot of these things, and you wanna decide later what goes on which one. So you would plug in this board, click prepare for first use. All it would do is install like minimal files just to get it connected to your network. Then you could take this thing, put them around your house, then jump back into the web interface, and say this one's gonna do this and this one's gonna do this and do all your configuration there. Well, that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're getting a configuration all set and then we're jumping in here and we're just using this to install our prepared bin file. So I'm gonna click install, I'm gonna click choose file and I'm gonna select the file that we just generated. It is now flashing the microcontroller with the configuration that we created and the ESP home firmware. While this is running, I'm gonna go grab one of the magic wands. That is finished. I've got my magic wand here. I'm gonna click close. All right, see, we can, we can see our device online now. Okay, cool. So we are booted up, everything is working and we're gonna go ahead and uh, wave the wand at the infrared sensor and see what happens. That is what we're looking for right there. See that wand ID? I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Quick note on this magnitude. I have no idea how this works. If you guys want, we can all work together as a community and figure out how this magnitude works. It would be like pretty cool if we could trigger different automations depending on like how the kid waved the wand or that kind of thing. Um, but I have not figured that out yet. I copied the wand ID and uh, this is this is my son's wand. I'm gonna call him child two for the sake of the video. That is not his name. This isn't the exact form that this is gonna take in the end, um, but I'm just getting the value in here. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna go grab the other wand. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back with the other kid's wand. There we go. There's the ID for the second wand. Go ahead and copy that. My daughter is child one. 
Let's go ahead and save that. Now, the reason I'm saving these in the secrets file is not because they are particularly secret values. It's just because I want to reuse them between lots of configs. So now I'm going to jump over here and grab the actual wording. Here we go. Wand to address. There we go. All right. So we've got both of our wand addresses now. So repeat that for as many wands as you've got. Now we're going to uncomment all this, delete this line, and we should be good to go. I'm going to click save, exit out of here. Now that this thing has ESP home on it, we can just take this and plug it in anywhere in the house. As long as it's powered up, it'll just update over the air. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to unplug it from my computer and we are going to plug this into a brick across the room and update it over the air just for funsies. I'm back at my desk that is plugged in over there next to the window and we're going to install the current configuration over the air wirelessly. Okay, we're done. Uh, there's not really a, a, like an exit from this installation prompt for some reason. Okay, I guess I guess the, the word edit means exit in this context for some reason. I'm gonna jump back into the regular logs. All right, now I'm gonna wave both of these wands at the sensor from across the room. Look at that. Child two, sending state on and then off. Child one. Those are the signals that we're going to use to trigger automations in Home Assistant. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get out of ESP Home now and jump over to Home Assistant. OK, here we are in Home Assistant. Uh, we're going to go over to Settings, Devices and Services, and there is our microcontroller right there. We're going to click Configure. Yes, I would like to add it to Home Assistant. This has to match between the two places. So I'm going to grab this value that we, we saved earlier and I'm gonna put it here. Now, I'm looking at this like an API key for Home Assistant. I keep one Home Assistant API key value here and I reference it in all of my configurations. Um, so I am personally copying and pasting this same value over and over again every time I add a new device. You don't have to do it that way. You just need this specific device. We need it to match between ESP Home and Home Assistant. And that's the important thing. Submit that. There we go. Now it's an available sensor in Home Assistant. So let's go ahead and uh, set up an automation. So I'm here back in settings, going to automations and scenes. I'm going to create an automation, create new automation. And our trigger is going to be the on event for one or both of the ones that we just set up. I'm going to do a device type trigger and the device is wand sensor child a lamp. So now we get to choose between child one and child two on and off state. We want it to trigger as soon as the kid waves the wand. So we're going to use on state and I want both of my kids wands to be able to turn on this lamp. So I'm going to set up both. I'm going to say child one wand turned on is a trigger for this automation. And then we're going to do another trigger. That's the same thing, but child two. There we go. And then action. I wanted to toggle the smart plug that my lamp is plugged into. And we're going to title this automation wands toggle child a lamp. All right, there it is. So to prove it's working, I'm going to wave this wand at the infrared sensor. Boom. Hey. 